Hey guys, this is Coach Chris. Welcome to my channel where we break down international level fights for strategies and tactics that you can use in your own matches. Today we're reviewing some more of uh, Park Taejun versus, um, and then today he's against Kim, another Korean. So we're gonna try and extrapolate whatever we can out of this match, and I'll see what I can get for you guys. This looks like it might be Korean. I can't read Korean. This looks like either normal tournament or it's at the like a. Uh, Semi-Olympic men's... I actually don't know where this is. A lot of left out of park. Left, like, front. It, that serves to do a couple of things. One is it makes it so um, the opponent almost subconsciously always blocks to the front because he's doing the same target over and over again. And I have a... I have a hard time... Like understanding, I guess why why doesn't someone spin against that or you know, so she I guess every now and then he's gonna make me eat my words, every now and then he changes it. Um. But he uses it so frequently that maybe it's. There's no time to think about the defense. You just kind of have to keep reacting because he's constantly he's constantly in your face and applying pressure. Left. 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 The right. Interesting stuff. Kind of showing that um, his, his arm, his gear is not, not on properly. That is the right leg. Kind of just eating the time away. The last 20 seconds here, and I only watched up to round one, the end of this one. And this where it kind of accepts that this is a... Uh, yeah. I think this guy kind of accepts that this round is lost. Round two, see if there's any adjustment. The reds adjustment was to constantly change um, foot pattern, so going left and right versus back and forth, not letting him press. That's an interesting defense, actually. So what's interesting is we actually had a coach who invented a style what this red guy is doing, and um, he called it a gunslinger mode, I think. But we, I never actually practiced it that much, but he had the idea for it, and it was specifically to counter a front leg use like this. Oh, nice try. Go more left and right. Yep, more left and right. More left and right and see if, let's see if he can do a little bit more of the, yeah. So the benefit, okay. Okay, I like what, this is, I came here to watch Park, but, oh, all the strategies taken down by the one technique. Um. I like what red's doing because blue doesn't know what's coming out of it. He doesn't know if he's going left or right, so it's hard. Oh. So what I was going to say is this left and right movement um, is new. It's not something that blue has. I, I don't imagine anyone's really actually trained against this. Um, and this left and right, and because he's not doing it one direction, it's hard to, for him to predict. He's doing kind of a shuttle movement left and right, almost like uh, One Punch Man in the anime. So you don't really know if he's going to go left or right. It, it, if, you, if he goes one way and you shoot that way and he moves the other way at the exact time you're kicking, then you're really, really open. Um, so Blue uh, Park is not really sure what to make of that. Uh, and that doing that gives Red um, the, game, the pace of the game. So he's allowed to, because Blue doesn't know when to go, he's not able to lock in on his opponent with his front leg. That allows Red to go in when he, when he wants. It doesn't, there were a couple of times where uh, these last two iterations where Red went for his head right away, which may not be a bad idea, uh, but obviously watching this in 2020, going for a different target and then the head may have been good. And once that exchange is done though, uh, where Blue got him was right when that foot lands, right after Red's go, then you're back to your regular Taekwondo style brawl. And I think that's where Park's uh, Park really shines is in that 
not the full on clinch breaking from clinch creating distance it's like not it's like really close distance so not the medium where people are hanging out in neutral territory but like on the edge it's when they're really close exchanging blows and that's where park excels it seems like the last couple two three fights i've watched after red's first kick they land there and so that's why he's able to score holy cow let's watch that again the left and right notice he caught him here right when he went back to the base stance right he's in regular taekwondo stance here uh park said you're not going to do that again that was such a sick off ball though look at this double tap one two great technique I mean, it's not not a bad idea by Red here to um, to try that, but I think he would have to practice more out of that stance. So it's not not a bad idea. I mean, another option. Oh, nice! Smothering this guy. So another option to fight this is if Park's front leg is really good. What if you switch to close stance? Um, I think in the last two fights I watched, no one really decided to fight him close stance. Everyone's been fighting him open stance. Everyone wants to use their left leg against his front leg. And I think he just drills his leg in that close distance way too much to succeed against it. Uh, at least unless someone else were to, you know, do that also. But it doesn't seem like no anyone's doing it in the frequency or in the style or in the accuracy that he is. And that's why he's winning. Um, so good job by Park here. Big takeaways. Uh, interesting and really good movement by red I, I haven't seen that since um our instructor jason alvaz was teaching that at our school uh so that that might actually start coming up if, if that's the case then J mr alvaz or uh, coach alvaz was teaching that 2011 he was uh 11 years in front of the game so good job for him uh, hopefully if you're watching this mr alvaz ot i mean you taught me a lot you helped me get really far you helped a lot of players get really far so i hope you're doing well but besides that 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 left and right movement is really good i would for those of you who are watching i would not do that in a match unless you've actually practiced that you've actually practiced watching when people blitz you it's not some special move you can pull out whenever it's something that you do have to move around and train with like as any weapon you don't especially at this caliber like if, if you're fighting a high caliber fighter and you're pulling out moves and uh, different stances that you've never used before um you're just getting kicked in the face you got to practice it in, in training a little, at least a little bit before you use it somewhere like this. So don't go into your next match thinking, oh, I can just use a shuttle step. This is what the red guy did against uh, Park, and he was able to hold off that front leg. Like that's you, – you can't do that. You got you to gotta really train from the unorthodox style stance like that. The second thing I'm tired, starting to take away from Park's game is that his left leg is just drilled, drilled, drilled in that closed distance. Like it is – um, it is accurate and he's able to change the direction and I don't know I, th I think this is probably previous to the last one I did and so he's added on to that left leg game where it's not just he's accurate in the clinch or not the clinch the, the close distance but now he has that crazy right leg and left leg floating um, flip down head kick to watch out for in the clinch as well so it doesn't it, it strikes me that this guy probably isn't the tallest fighter in the division but, man, if he's on the inside, you better believe that those points are going to get on the board. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, hope you guys were able to find some tips. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.